Amen. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Ilkiah, and I will clothe him with thy robe and strengthen him with thy girdle, and I will commit thy government into his hand, and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. And they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the issue, all the vessels of small quantity from the vessels of cups, even to all the vessels of flagons, 25th and last. And in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is fastened in the sure place be removed and be cut down and fall, and the burden that was upon it shall be cut off, for the Lord hath spoken it. Amen. Amen. The government of God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come one more time before your presence and as we go into this word this morning in the name of Jesus, we ask for clarity, we ask for divine inspiration. Let the spirit of wisdom and revelation be upon us this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this moment become as a spiritual womb, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We ask for strength, mighty God, to bring forth this word in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for clarity. Let Lord Jesus Christ, the eyes of our understanding be flooded with light in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, let the word go forth with penetrative power in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it become as a two-edged sword going, mighty God, cutting, coming, and going. We ask that the word will become a hammer, Lord Jesus Christ, to smash through and to break through every opposition in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the word bring forth liberty this morning for your name's sake and your mercy's sake. Let shackles break. Let yokes be destroyed even now almighty God. For your name's sake and your mercy's sake almighty God. Let the tangible weight of your glory sit upon your people like never before almighty God. Be glorified be exalted and be honored even now as we give you thanks and we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give the Lord praise and glory, the government of God. Now, our text takes us into the lives of Shibna and Elkiah. And the Bible says that Jerusalem was going to be under siege and that it was going to be taken into captivity. And in the midst of this, Isaiah gets a vision and he begins to declare the downfall of Shibna. Now, Shibna was the person that was sitting upon the throne. Uh, and so Isaiah began to declare that there was going to be a shift of power. That power was going to change hands and that Eliakim was going to be raised up, that a spiritual transfer was going to take place, and that God was going to install the man that he designed to be uh, upon the throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, it was a God thing because understand that God rules in the affairs of men. Hallelujah. He sets up one and he dethrones the other. That all authority and all power uh, is allowed and facilitated by God. And so, when we talk about the government of God, understand that the government 
uh, takes in every person that is in rule and in his and that is in power. And so the Bible tells us in our text that God was going to intervene in the affairs of men and that government was going to be shifted. And I want you to understand that once you become a believer and you become born again, that you are a citizen of heaven and automatically under the government of God. Hallelujah. There are rules, there are guidelines, and there are regulations that you must adhere to as a citizen of heaven. And so, brothers and sisters, to be in relationship with God is to come under the governance, the rule, and the authority of God. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, if you're going to come under God's government, if you're going to come under side of God that concerns his majesty, his demand for justice, his swift action against sin. It's the side of God that brings forth judgment and it's the side of God that demands absolute reverence. So there is no way for you to come up under the government of God and not deal with his holiness. The Bible says holiness unto the Lord. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that the four and 20 elders are oh, they cease not night and day to give thanks unto God and one of the things that they declare is holy 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 is the Lord God almighty which was which is and is to come and so I want you to recognize today that your God is a holy God I want you to recognize today that he demands holiness he uh, dwells in the place and in the realm of holiness and anybody who is going to walk with him has got to walk in holiness. You have got to be sanctified, meaning separated from this world and the deeds thereof. You have got to die to your flesh. You have got to get on your own cross and begin to die to selfish ambition and die to pride and die to everything that will come up against the holiness of God. And so, brothers and sisters, Ah, the closer we get to God is the more conscious we ought to become of his holiness. The closer we get to God is the more we have got to understand that he is to be reverent, that we ought to draw nigh unto him, bowing down before him because he is the king of glory. He is the immortal God. He is the invisible God. He is the most high God. And so understand that the Holy Spirit is the enforcer of holiness. Hallelujah. You have got to be baptized in the spirit. You have got to get that new birth experience because it is the Holy Spirit that cometh from God that enforces his holiness. And so, brothers and sisters, in order for you uh, to be exempted from the spirit of the age, and the spirit of the age is a spirit with no conscience. People just do whatever they see fit in their own eyes and there is no conviction of wrong and there is no conviction of sin. David said, God keep me from presumptuous sin. And so brothers and sisters, we are living in an age where right is deemed wrong and wrong is deemed right. And so you need the enforcer. You need the spirit of the living God to get you back into alignment. You need the Holy Ghost to enforce and to convict you of wrong because the Bible tells us that in the last days that the hearts of men would become desperately wicked and they would refuse to repent and there would be no conviction and so every time the spirit convicts you of wrong you've got to give the Lord praise some of us don't want to be convicted but understand that it is
is a good thing when your conscience troubles you, when your conscience ah, dictates that something is wrong. Hallelujah. You've got to give the Lord praise because it's the spirit of the Lord that is working to keep you God conscious. It's the spirit of the Lord that's working to keep you in the place of holiness. It's the spirit of the Lord that is working to keep you on the side of God. Hallelujah. And so, according to the Old Testament, the oil of the anointing was not to be duplicated. In other words, brothers and sisters, there should be no strange oil. There should be no contamination in the oil. There should be no strange fire that is lit because God is holy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is an oil that was separated. It was separated to minister unto God. And so you can't mingle in every and anything and you can't have uh, all sorts of conversations. Sometimes when you're in certain conversations, the spirit of the Lord will convict you because those things are not supposed to come out of your mouth because you are the temple of the living. God, there is a demand, hallelujah, there is a demand of the spirit of God for you to walk in holiness, there is a demand of the spirit of God for you to stay under the government of God and to stay in alignment with the supreme good of heaven, hallelujah, and so our lives must be guided by holiness if we are under God's government, hallelujah, because the devil is thing that he produces is unholy. And so, brothers and sisters, the holiness of God is the policing system of heaven. Hallelujah. It ensures that nothing comes in the presence of God that is going to violate the holiness of God. Hallelujah. And so every time the enemy attacks us uh, through lies and deception and filthiness, understand that he is coming up against the holiness of God. Every time the enemy wants you to compromise your integrity and compromise your walk with God, it's not just about you, but understand that he is coming up against the holiness of God. Because remember that the devil was inside God. God's holiness because he was an anointed cherub and the cherub was in the presence of God. It was the angel that was closest to God. And so we understand the holiness of God and understand the demands of the holiness. And so what the devil wants to do is to defile you or to get you to defile your temper so that you become perverted and so that you injure the holiness of God. God, and that you block yourself out of getting into certain places of elevation in the spirit because they demand holiness. Ah, David said, who will ascend ah, into the hills of God and who shall go into the holy tabernacle? He that has clean hands and a pure heart and has not lifted up his soul unto vanity. And so the Bible ah, declares that spiritual elevation comes to and demands holiness and because the devil does not want you to ascend because the devil does not want you to get any closer he does not want you to get into greater ranks in the spirit and command a different rank of angels and command a different dimension in the spirit he tries to dilute and pollute your spirit but today the devil is a liar you have got to declare that holiness is your watchword and your song. You have got to declare that you are separated. You have got to declare no matter how difficult, no matter how challenging it is, that you will not defile the temple of the living God. That you will not be bribed out of your destiny, bribed out of your purpose, bribed out of your assignment. Ah, you have got to declare the devil to be the liar that he is and that you have got to command respect in heaven and respect on earth that you will not defile your garments that 
that you are coming into the holiness of God and you will do whatever is necessary to remain in the place of holiness because I understand that because God is holy and when you approach him, ah, it demands holiness. There is an element of protection that comes with walking in holiness. Hallelujah. There is an element of provision that comes with holiness. Again, Satan was a sheriff. And when you are begin to look into scripture and study it, he was a part of the security system of heaven. And so he wants you to break out of the protective element of God and to define yourself so that your life can be opened up to all sorts of demonic invasions. Understand that holiness is not just you being able to approach God, but holiness carries protection. Ah, you have got to come under the protective elements of God. You have got to come under the security system of heaven. And so you have got to ensure that you are covered. You have got to ensure that you are protected. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, the devil wants us to come from under government. He wants us to become loose and he wants us to get to a point where there is no protection and where there is no, there is no barricade and shield against any opposition he places on our lives. And so there's got to be a continuous, a continuous pursuit of holiness. Now you are absolutely righteous because we gain right standing with God because of faith. It's not by works and so we are righteous before God because we believe and we are saved. But understand that holiness demands a separate there's got to be a decision that is made that we are going to uh, walk with God and talk with God and that we're going to cleanse ourselves from all forms of filthiness of flesh and spirit. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, the devil wants us to come from under the place of holiness so that he has legal ground to curse us and legal ground to build up strongholds in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so he wants us to come from under uh, the government of God and to abandon holiness so that he can stand up in the courts of God. And when God calls the court to order and he begins to declare that, well, you did this and you did that, uh, he wants legal ground to set up strongholds in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, Brothers and sisters, understand the far-reaching impact of you walking in holiness, of you de uh, denying yourself certain things in order to remain holy. Hallelujah. And listen, if God cannot control the subjects or the citizen of his kingdom, ah, the kingdom will be divided. The Bible says a kingdom divided against itself will not be able to stand. And so what the devil wants to do is to split the power in the kingdom of God. He wants to split it and wants to weaken the impact of the kingdom of God in the earth. And so Oh, he will send you lusting and so he will send you compromising your integrity and compromising your standard because he wants to split power he wants to weaken ah the power of god he wants to weaken your witness and weaken your ability to produce the glory of god in the earth and so he's coming to split power he's coming to bring division he's coming to our uh, cause strife between between you and God. And so you've got to, you have got to value your relationship with God far above any other relationship and anything and anybody who is going to cause you to walk out of the will of God and cause you to compromise and cause you to have to be consistently repenting. That person does not need to be in your life because at the end of the day, when they walk away, all you're going to be left with is the 
the almighty God and so you've got to be the kind of person that says no retreat and no surrender because if one person walks out, if one door closes, the God that you serve, being the faithful God that he is, is going to send somebody else another door. You cannot afford to leave the door open for a door. Hallelujah. A door that can be shut at any time. But door opener. If one door closes, he is the open door. He is the God who opens and no and so when God opens the door, brothers and sisters, nobody, no devil, no spell, no incantation can shut the door. So I'd rather be with the door opener than stay at a door that is going to cause me to compromise, that is going to cause me to defile the temple of the living God, that's going to cause me to injure my anointing and my assignment and the, and the place that God has called Hold me to. I cannot ascend to. The devil is a liar. I'm going to stay on the side of God until he gives me everything he promised to give me. Hallelujah. And so God rules by the power of his might. He is the supreme God by his very nature. He is such a ruler that he ordered his own existence. He said in Jeremiah, to whom will men liken me? Or oh, who can I be compared to? Hallelujah. He said to Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the world? He is the boss. Hallelujah. And so you don't need to compromise your morals for a boss because God is the ultimate boss. Come on. You don't need to compromise yourself to get some money because he is the boss. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell in it. Hallelujah. And so he is the real boss. Hallelujah. And he's the one that you ultimately answer to and let nobody let you feel or put you under pressure that you have got to compromise who you are and compromise your purpose and compromise your uh, destiny over a quick fix. The devil is a liar. God is in control. He has everything you need. He declared that he will supply every need according to his riches in glory. And so you don't need to compromise anything. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, the Bible uh, tells us through the prophet Isaiah that Jesus, when he would come on the scene, that the government was going to be upon his shoulder. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, the government being on the shoulder of Jesus, hallelujah, is connected to Jewish tradition. It is said that when the bride walks down the aisle, ah, uh, and the groom, hallelujah, in a Jewish uh, wedding ceremony, lifts the veil that he uh, places a part of the veil over his shoulder, uh, signifying that his bride was going to come up under his government, hallelujah that his bride was going to come up under his provision and his protection, that his bride was going to come up under everything that he had to offer her. And so, brothers and sisters, when we make a commitment to God and we come up under the aisle, we walk uh, on the aisle of life uh, down to the place where we make a commitment to God. God covers us, uh, hallelujah, up under his government. God covers us uh, up under his will. Hallelujah. And so brothers and sisters, understand that coming up under the government of God also means submitting to his will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It means not forcing the will of God or manipulating the will of God. God can give you a prophetic word and the word that will come to pass like the word ought to come to pass and we try to help God we try to manipulate God is not this uh, oh, what Sarah tried to do with Abraham God made him a promise and Sarah couldn't what he said he would do. And so Agar came into the picture and she manipulated or tried to manipulate the will of God and sent Abraham Agar and Ishmael came up, but understand it, God will not cause you, uh, you to compromise uh, your integrity. 
ability to accomplish what he has already ordained. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will not allow you or ask you to compromise who you are to get what he has called you to. Ah, uh, do not allow the devil to tempt you with what God has already declared is yours. Never let the devil tempt you with what God already said was going to be yours. When Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, the Bible said that the devil wanted to make him, ah, uh, to make him fall down and worship him. The devil wanted him to, to turn stone into bread, but Jesus understood who he was. The Bible says that Jesus declared that I am the bread that cometh down from heaven. And so Satan wanted to tempt him with what he was already and what he already had in his hand. It was only a matter of time before he manifested the side of his character. And so brothers and sisters, never allow the devil to dangle anything uh, that God has promised and that God has written in your spirit and cause you to come out of the timing of God and cause you to abort the process and the will of God just because you can't wait, just because you have become impatient. The devil is a liar and somehow even if we slip up and even if we make mistakes, God is still going to work his sovereign will even through the things that we have done wrong. And so brothers and sisters, when we look back at the life of Abraham, God begin to work things. God begin to work. But there were consequences because Agar had to be thrown out of the covenant of God. She had to get outside of the covenant because listen, Abraham was about to split his inheritance. Abraham was about to compromise all of the blessings that God had for him. And listen, one decision caused generations to be uh, in trouble. Abraham had Ishmael and Ishmael is connected to Islam and Islam is connected uh, to terrorism and to the extremists that are a part of Islam. And so what we have today uh, are terrorists. What we have today is a people connected uh, to Ishmael that are warlike, that are destructive uh, in character. And so brothers and sisters, one compromise began to split the inheritance of Abraham. And uh, one compromise caused a people to be raised up that connected themselves to the devil, that connected themselves to the rebellion of Satan and have become a thorn in the side of the Jews, have become a thorn in the side of every other nation under the earth because God cannot lie. He was carrying uh, the seed of Abraham. Ishmael had the seed of Abraham on the inside of him and because he had the seed of Abraham, there had to be greatness. There had to be multiplication. And so brothers and sisters, when you come from under government and God has already made declarations of increase and abundance over your life, whichever way you point, the seed that you're carrying is going to reproduce. And so Abraham pointed the seed into anarchy and rebellion and it got to reproduce because God remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. He's not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. His promises of old are yea and they are amen. So understand this, that disobedience is rebellion. When God gives us instructions and we do not follow them, it's not just mere disobedience, but disobedience is rebellion. And when you disobey God, you are coming up against the government of God. And so one of the greatest weapons that the believer has is when you learn to obey the command of God, when you stop questioning and wondering how things are going to work, and God gives you an and 
that you choose to obey, it becomes a weapon. It says something that drives the devil crazy because everything about the devil is born out of rebellion. Its very nature is rebellion itself. Hallelujah. And so when you choose to walk in obedience, ah, you bring damage to the kingdom of darkness. When you disobey, you give praise to the devil. You strengthen the devil. You give him the right to come into your life and to wreak ever. Because listen, when you come into the presence of God and you are worshiping him and you even manifest a gift and you fall out on the floor, that is a sacrifice. But if you are living in disobedience, you have got to declare the word of the Lord that obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the Bible says to us that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, hallelujah. Why? Because you are rebelling against the systems of God. You are coming up against the government of God and you are seeking, you are seeking results outside of the legal channel that God has all raised up. And so it becomes witchcraft because you begin to, you begin to manipulate a system in order to get a particular result outside of what God has predetermined and predesigned from the foundations of the world. And so you are coming up against the system of God. You are coming up against what God has ordained from the foundations of the world. And you are strengthening the devil. You are giving the devil access. You are all, you are giving over your territory into the hands of the enemy. Understand when you live in disobedience, the territory that you gain is automatically ceded over to the devil. Is not this that happened to Abraham, to Adam and Eve? They disobeyed God and they ceded their authority and their dominion over the earth. They gave it over to Satan. They gave over rulership and they gave over dominion to the devil. And so when you live in a life of disobedience, you are giving over rule. You are giving over your territory. You are giving over your dominion and your power over to the devil. And so today, if you're walking in disobedience, you have got to repent and you have got to recover the territory Hallelujah. Some of the sicknesses and some of the diseases that are upon our lives is because the devil has overtaken the territory. Some of the hardship and some of the frustration that we are feeling in our lives is because the devil has taken over the territory. But you've got to get in the place of prayer and you've got to demolish every stronghold that has been built up to the devil. And you've got to take back the territory. You have got to recover everything that the devil has stolen out of your life because he is a thief. Nothing that he has all belongs to him. The Bible says that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so you have got to recover. You have got to recover everything. The enemy has stolen out of your life. Hallelujah. When you become under the uh, a part of the government of God, when you come under his government, understand that you are also an ambassador of Christ. Ah, uh, because the government is on the shoulder of Jesus. Another reason for it being on his shoulder, it signifies weight and wrath. It signifies authority and power. And so, brothers and sisters, ah, the government being on the shoulder of Jesus, ah, deals with his authority and his dominion. And so, because ah, ah, the government is on the shoulder of Christ, we have become ambassadors of Christ. Hallelujah. We have been given rank and we have been given authority 
in Christ Jesus. Everybody that names the name of Christ has automatically taken on rank through baptism. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once we become one with him, oh, the same level of rank that Jesus has on the earth is the same level of rank that every believer possesses because the Bible says that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus, far above principalities and power, we are seated, we are in him, and so because we are seated in him, we are ears and joint ears with Christ, and so brothers and sisters, we are seated in heavenly places, and we ought to walk like it, talk like it, and act like it, hallelujah, hallelujah, and so there is what is called diplomatic immunity, and you have got to enforce it. What is diplomatic immunity? Every ambassador that is at, 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 is at a certain rank uh, is eligible for diplomatic immunity. And what it is, is that you are not subjected to the laws of any foreign land. That you are not subjected, even if you get in trouble, subjected to the laws of the foreign land that you are serving, representing your home country. We are not of this world, hallelujah. Our home is in heaven, ah, oh, hallelujah. We are first class citizens in heaven and second class citizens upon the earth. And so brothers and sisters, we are just occupying until now the time come that there will be time no more and so brothers and sisters you are above the world system and the laws thereof you are above the system that run this world and the laws thereof are the spiritual laws the spiritual laws of decay the spiritual laws of a fallen world you are above these laws and so you've got to activate diplomatic immunity. You have got to enforce your right to longevity, your right to life. You have got to enforce your right to live sickness free and disease free, poverty free and lack free. You have got to enforce your right uh, to be protected, your right not to walk under any attack and onslaught of the enemy. You have got to declare that the kingdom of God has come. You have got to ensure that you enforce the kingdom and that you take geographical and jurisdictional authority over the earth and enforce your right to life, your right to provision, your right to access, your right to rule and to reign upon the earth and cause everything that does not line up with the will of God in your house, outside of your house, in your ministry, in your business, in your workplace, to be cast out and wiped from the face of the earth. You have a responsibility as a believer to come under government, to be subjected to government, but also to release the government of God. You have got to release the order of the kingdom in your house. No spirit of rebellion and anarchy confusion is supposed to be overtaking your house and overtaking your space because you are a child of God. You have got to enforce the kingdom of God. You have got to drive out everything that does not line up with the will of God, that does not come into agreement with the government under which you serve. You have got to give the devil notice. You have got to overrule and overturn and annihilate everything that comes to break the laws of God. Everything that comes to defile the temple of the living God. You have got to break its power, break its authority, break its rule, break its dominion. You have got to declare kingdom of the living 
letting God come, kingdom come, and the will of God be done in every single area of your life. Declare the will over your economy. Declare the will over the political system. Declare the will of God over the education and the cultural system. Begin to declare the kingdom of God. Begin to declare that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ and that he will reign forever. You have got to take your position as a child of God and begin to declare and facilitate the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so today, we declare that we are under the government of God. We declare that we have immunity over and above the spiritual laws that run this world and the world systems. We declare holiness unto the Lord. We declare that our lives are going to line up with the will and the authority and the dominion of God. We declare today that we will not compromise who we are to get back, that we are going to remain steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And we declare that the enemy is not going to manipulate us and cause us to step out of the will of God, to grab a hold to the things that God has already promised us. Hallelujah. And so as we pray today, as we lift up ourselves before the Lord, we want to ask God for strength. We want to ask God for courage. We want to ask God to help us to remain stable, even under pressure, and to remain in his courts and under his protection, regardless of the offers that are made, regardless of what the enemy is dangling before us. We are under government. We are submitted to government. We are enforcers of government. And we are declaring that the kingdom of God has come in our lives. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you this morning, we declare, almighty God, that your kingdom come and your will be done in our lives, mighty God. We declare that we will not compromise our integrity, that we will not compromise who we are, Father God, for anything. We declare holiness unto the Lord is our watchword and our song this morning. We declare that integrity and uprightness will preserve us because we wait on you. We declare today, God, that we refuse to defile ourselves and defile our garments, mighty God. We declare, mighty God, that there will be no flies in the oil of our anointing, that no stench will come forth out of our anointing today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask God Almighty as you prepare us for elevation, mighty God, that you give us clean hands and pure hearts and cause us not to lift up our souls unto vanity. We pray that you will cause us to die to our flesh and die to our desires, mighty God. Help us to be crucified to the world and the world crucified to us, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare tonight, God Almighty, that every demonic spirit, every stronghold that has been raised up in our lives, Father God, Lord Jesus, that they crumble and they fall right now in the name
name of Jesus Christ, we ask Almighty God that you will intervene. We ask that you will purge us, Father. We come up against every lie of the enemy in the name of Jesus, every deception, every delusion, every contrary thing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come against the witchcraft and the manipulation of the enemy. Those in our lives that are master manipulators, expose them by your fire tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we out every imposter in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, we flush out every stranger, every person that wants us, mighty God, to compromise who we are and to compromise our integrity. Let them be flushed out of our lives. In the name of Jesus, Father God, every parasite, in the name of Jesus, every predator, let them be driven out now in the mighty name of Jesus. For your name's sake and your mercy's sake, heal our souls and our minds today. In the name of Jesus, we cast down imaginations and every high thing that seeks to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And we bring every thought into captivity, even unto the obedience of Christ. Father God Almighty, do a work in our lives, Father God. Sever every illegal tie. In the name of Jesus, sever every illegal soul tie. In the name of Jesus Christ, everybody controlling and manipulating our decisions that are contrary to your will. Let the tie break now. In the name of Jesus, deliver us from evil in all shapes and forms today. For your name's sake and your mercy's sake, raise up a standard by your spirit, mighty God, and prevail. Father oh, God, we surrender. We surrender our will and our way. We surrender everything. Purge us with his up today. Wash us and we will be whiter than snow. Mighty God, forgive us. Mighty God, as we repent today, remove every obstacle. Oh, God Almighty, destroy every stronghold and cause deliverance to manifest in every single area of our lives. Hallelujah. As we give your praise, hallelujah, as we give your glory, hallelujah, and as we give your thanks in the exalted name of Jesus, we give your glory, almighty God. We give your honor, almighty God. We lift you up and we give you praise, hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord praise today hallelujah somebody bless his name hallelujah we give you praise god we glorify your name we honor you and we lift you up thank you jesus oh bless his name thank you jesus amen and amen thank you jesus amen and as we are about to close, we will not close today without giving you an invitation to come unto the Lord. The Bible says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so today we want you to enter into the rest of the Lord. We want you to come up under his government and to submit to his will, to come up under his protection, to come up under his provision and his peace. Hallelujah. No longer delay, but make this the day when you surrender everything to the Lord. Hallelujah. We just want to give you a minute to make your decision this afternoon hallelujah thank you jesus it's not the will of the lord that any should perish but that all should come to know him who to know is life eternal it is not his will that any should have their final destination in hell but he has given us 
the opportunity and has given us the time to make our calling and our election sure. Amen. And so I'm just going to pray for you. You can make an indication on any of our social media platforms. You can also, if you're on the Zoom, you can send uh, a message in the chat. You can also connect with us via telephone or email. Amen. And so you are encouraged this morning to surrender. Let us pray one more time. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for every person that has made a decision to walk with you. We thank you, Lord God, for one more soul, one more opportunity, Father God, to celebrate with the angels that are in heaven. And so, Almighty God, we place them in your hands. You said, those that are in your hands, no man can pluck out. And so, God, we place them in your hands. This afternoon, mighty God, we ask that you will keep them as the apple of your eye. Mighty God, and that you will keep them in this world. In the name of Jesus Christ, that you will sustain them in all seasons. And that you will cause them to remain faithful in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we celebrate with you this morning that you have made a decision to walk with the Lord. Amen. So just reach out and we will take it from here as we help you on your journey with the Lord. Amen and amen. So once again, God bless you. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for the support. And so the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and the Lord grant you peace. Amen. Looking forward to seeing you on Tuesday night. Also, if you are available. You can make the sacrifice to be with us on Friday night for our quarterly vigil. Amen. And of course, we come back once again on Sunday morning. God bless you. God bless you until I see you again. Amen. <laughs>